Greek of the 5th century BC to describe the heroic age of his culture and civilization, he would be describing to you an age which preceded him by at least five or six hundred years. And he would describe the heroic age as an age of warriors, soldiers, who fought for material possessions, fought for their fame and glory, and fought so that their name might be remembered for all generations. Now, many of those concepts are rather alien to our culture nowadays, and some of them are even a tad repugnant, that you would fight for material things and for your fame and glory. So even though these men are famous, we remember their names. It's kind of fuzzy as to what they actually did, what specific battles they fought in. But if we were to ask a reasonably well-educated audience, in what battle did Achilles and Hector fight in? In what war was clever Odysseus involved? What war was started off by the abduction of a Greek princess? And what war involved a great wooden horse? And everybody would know it's the Trojan War. So we have a war that is 3,000 years old, and even to a mildly educated audience, they know the the players, the characters, the warriors. But we get closer and closer to history and things become vague. How is it that Troy and the Trojan War are so famous? You might say it's because Troy was a famous city, a great city. But in fact, it wasn't. You could walk from one end of the citadel to Troy in under two minutes. It's a very small citadel. Now, there's a great lower city, but the citadel is small. You might say, well, it's the length of the war. Even if we allow for poetic exaggeration that the war lasted for 10 years, so what? Athens and Sparta were engaged in a war for twice as long as that. We have in Western history the 30 years war, the 100 years war. Why should a 10 year war be so important? You could say, well, maybe the Trojan War changed the course of history. Hardly. <laughs> How about the size of the armies? Even if we allow, again, for poetic exaggeration that Helen's face launched a 1,000 ships, that pales in comparison to the size of the armies that the Assyrians and the Egyptians at the same time were fielding. So if none of these factors account for Troy's fame, what actually does? Well, rather than make you wait until the last lecture for the answer, <laughs> we'll find the answer in the words of Alexander the Great. After one of his many battles in which he was victorious, he was, as usual, sulking and pouting in his tent. And one of his companions asked him the reason for this morose behavior. And Alexander said, had he a man like Homer to celebrate his deeds, his name would live forever like that of Achilles. In other words, the reason Troy is famous is because of the man who sang about it and the book or the poem that he composed. Homer and the Iliad are what made the fame of Troy. Homer is of utmost importance in the history of Greek and Western literature. Now, we're going to leave aside, for the moment, the whole question of who Homer was. We'll talk about that in the last two classes. But the Iliad is the dawn of Greek literature and the dawn of Western literature. It is the Iliad that set the literary and the civic standards for the Greeks for hundreds of years. The Iliad became the classic of Greek literature. Thank you.